Welcome to another Model A mini guide. It's a rainy day here at the shop, so instead of doing part three of my cylinder head guide, I'm gonna do a guide on coil testing. Um, so just to refresh everyone's memory, here's your ignition coil, and you've got three wires on the coil. One of them goes directly to power. This one's live all the time. This one comes off of the ignition, so when the key is turned or popped out, uh, there's current in this. And then this is your uh, high tension cable that goes to your distributor. So when there's power in both of these and it's grounded, nothing happens, but as your, um, as your points open, the ground here disappears and there's videos online about how this all works, but the uh, 20,000 volts or more goes through down through here and makes a spark and goes to your spark plugs. So how do you test a coil to see if it's any good? Because they can be bad. Well, we're gonna find out. Okay, this is a coil tester. Uh, this is the testing unit itself. It's a Snap-on MT640. I think this unit's from like the 50s or 60s. Um, it's not as cool looking as some coil testers. Uh, if you search for the Herbrand 660, I wanna say, um, that's a really cool looking one. It's got a lot of brass and uh, looks really nice, um, but it costs $300 and this one I got on eBay for 60, so I like this one. The other thing I like about this one is it's got the instructions written right on it, which is really nice. Um, so the way you do coil testing, I've got a coil right here. This is, I don't think it's, I don't know if it's original. It's pretty old. It's definitely from the 30s. Um, so this may or may not be an original Model A coil, but you know, maybe it's from the Model B or the V8 era. Um, so we got our coil, we got our coil tester. We're gonna need a six volt battery. This is a six volt lead acid battery. You can buy these at Walmart. Um, they use them for lanterns and other kinds of things. And so the way this is wired up, you've got three wires here. Um, first, you got your high tension wire. That's going into the high tension plug here on the um, coil. Then you've got your uh, direct power. So remember the Model A is six volt positive ground. So my negative is flowing into the coil. And then I've got my, uh, what would come from the, uh, from the distributor, I guess, or from the ignition to provide power here. So that come, that's the red line coming in here. And then lastly, I've got a ground. So uh, this all isn't really active until I hook up the ground. So I'm gonna do that now. You may see a little spark. Not much spark, okay. So now the system is live. And what we are gonna do is when this is turned on, uh, this is going to mimic uh, a spark plug. So when it's turned on, there's a condenser or a capacitor inside here that's just going to uh, collapse the magnetic field over and over and over and over and over, you know, a thousand times a second. And that'll cause a spark to jump right here. And the way this works is you run this uh, knob down. You can see it's got red, yellow, and green. And as you run the knob down, the, um, these electrodes get closer and closer to each other. And so you basically turn this in until your coil is able to jump the gap repeatedly. And then you look and you see, well, if I'm in the yellow zone, then it's pretty weak. If I'm in the green zone, I'm good. If I'm in the red zone, then that's a bad coil. So there's also this thing here, which I believe is called a Geissler tube. I think that's what they're called. It's just a tube that's filled with um, fluorescing gas, like neon. And so if any current is going across, this gas will fluoresce and it'll tell you that though you may not see a spark, it's really working because you'll see the gas. So anyway, okay, so what we're gonna do, I'll start this in and then what we'll do is we'll take it out until the spark is not able to jump the gap anymore.
Okay. So, I don't know how well you can see, but this is, right now, this is right on the edge of green. It's just barely green. Um, but you might think, well, okay, it's an old coil, sure, it served its time, but it's just barely green, and, um, and that's good enough. But there's a problem, which is that coils, when they get hot, um, for reasons that I'm not exactly sure, I think it has to do with the breakdown of the insulation, but when coils get hot, which they do in an engine compartment, they can get pretty hot, their, circum their, um, their abilities change. The, the ability to generate a coil uh, spark changes as the coil warms up. So what I'm doing now, I don't know if you can see, but uh, this is set to heat only. So what's actually happening right now, it's not off. The, the, cir the, um, the electricity is actually circling, it's in a circuit through, through the coil. So it's going from the battery and then through the coil and then back to the ground. And as it goes through, this coil is going to start to heat up. So I'm going to start a timer, and we're just going to wait, and we're going to let this coil get hot. It's like vaguely a little bit warm right now, but we're going to let it get pretty hot like it would get in an engine compartment. Then we're going to come back and see if there's any change in its performance. All right, so we've given this about five minutes, and plus it was warming up while I was talking earlier, so maybe it's had seven, eight, ten minutes total to warm. And I got my IR, so it's reading about 113, 115, a little cooler up at the top. Okay, so yeah, this is, you know, pretty hot, like you'd get inside an engine compartment. All right, let's see how we did. You can see this is very, very different. I haven't touched this but it's unable to make the spark that it was making. So let's dial in until it gets better. There we go. So now it's able to handle it. Kind of. It's still not great. All right. So where did we get? We moved from barely in the green until into solidly in the yellow. So that's an example, let's disconnect this. So that's an example of how a coil that might test good when you're sitting in the garage, when you get out on the road and you've been out there for a few, you know, 10, 15 minutes and things are starting to get hot in the engine compartment, uh, you can start to experience, you know, misses like uh, the engine, engine stops, um, just all kinds of weird performance because if this is not, making spark regularly, you know, you might be getting a spark on the one and two, but not the three, or you might get it, you know, like 75% of the time, different cylinders. So that is a real concern. Um, so I was using this because I was like, oh, cool, original coil still works. Put it on the car. Uh, I was using this until I got a coil tester. And then I tested this thing. I was like, I got to stop using this. Um, but just to show you what uh, the baseline kind of looks like for a known good coil, we're going to take our setup here and we're going to move it over to the Model A and we'll test the coil that's in the car now. And I'll show you how to do that and I'll show you what you get when you are testing a good coil. Okay, so here is the coil tester and we're going to do it right on the car. So as before, we've got three wires. So our high tension wire is plugged into the coil on the car. The coil remains connected to battery power. So you see that one on the right, which goes to the battery. I've left that one on, but I've taken off the one on the left, which goes to uh, the ignition. We're going um, to replace that. And I have grounded, so the black ground wire, that's just going to the fuel line. You just need to ground that to something that um, is conductive. Okay. So I've got this set for heat just to get started. I'm going to take my active line, connect this in here. This one you'll see a bigger spark. There we go. Okay, so now it's live. And now we're going to see 
what a regular coil should look like. And I'm not going to talk during this because uh, the microphone antenna I'm using can act as a it can act as an antenna, and this thing throws off a lot of EM static. So you may not be able to hear me talk while this thing is going on, but I'll run it and then then we'll talk. Okay, let's go. Okay, so you could see there the spark was really strong, much stronger than the original coil that we tested, and I was able to move the knob out right to the middle of the green zone with no, almost no change in the spark strength. That is the kind of performance you want on a coil that you're going to put in the car. Um, I'm not going to do the stress test on this coil. Uh, I have done it. Test's fine, no change. That's what you want. You want a coil that has a really strong spark to begin with and that stress tests well. So, get this off. All right, that is coil testing. Um, if you have any questions, you can put them in the comments. Uh, if anybody wants that old coil uh, that you should not put on the car, but it's kind of a historical curiosity, uh, I don't know, if you want to pay me shipping, I'll send it to you. <laughs> it's not doing me any good. Um, but here's a close-up on the, uh, the snap-on, the MT640. You can see it's also a condenser tester. I have not done that, but I will one of these days. It's pretty cool. These come up on eBay from time to time. If nothing else, it's actually just real, a really fun demo. Like, it's, you know, sparks. So people really love, uh, people love it when you demo this. It's a cool demo.